Okay, hello everyone and welcome to the Podman Community Call. This is a bi-monthly meeting run every other month on the first Tuesday of the month. And this is the July call. We have two topics on the agenda. The first one is Conflux for Upstream Podman, Builda, and Scopio Images, and CI. Uh, Chris and Lakesh, you guys want to run this one? Uh, is Chris here? Uh, I don't see him on the call. I will, let's poke Chris. We probably want him present for this. Yeah. All right, just a minute. Uh, yeah, he says he's joining. We should be set. Okay, excellent. I think we have everyone we need to discuss. So, uh, Lakesh, you want to go ahead and start us off? Um, sure. Uh, so, we have uh, Ralph Spin from the Conflux project. Uh, and we also have Chris who does a lot of our SDI. Um, so uh, the one, the first agenda topic for today is to check uh, how Conflux uh, can be used to build our images and maybe help in our CI. And I think most people on the call don't know much about Conflux. So maybe Ralph, do you want to give us a quick intro uh, about Conflux and then maybe answer questions from the team and the community? Sure, sure, I'll try. So Conflux started as a project at Red Hat to um, create the next generation of our internal build and release pipeline, but we've, we've made it as an open source project. If there's not a link in the agenda, I'll put it in inside part. Um, slash Conflux CI. Um, it's all based on TechPop, uh, so it's Kubernetes based. We, an instance of Conflux looks like a Kubernetes cluster that has Tekton running. We'll hook up to Git repositories and use a, a webhook to receive events from GitHub, kick off builds from there. We, we have a set of default pipelines that put an emphasis on supply chain security, so providing scanners and linters for malware and for CVE analysis and all, all that stuff. Um, and at the, at the point of build, um, there's an emphasis on producing good SBOMs. So the, the default per, for providing SBOM for us and, and for pretty much for everybody is SIFT out there. And SIFT does like static analysis of your Git repository uh, to figure out what it thinks is probably gonna be included in your build. Uh, we have a, a feature on top of that called hermetic builds where if, if you enable it for a particular image you're trying to build, we'll disable all network egress during the build uh, and uh, require you to declare dependencies for the build upfront We'll prefetch and provide to that build. The whole point of that is that we can provide like a, a high confidence SBOM. It's not just static analysis of the repo content where we may have missed something, a curl command somewhere, but we can be sure that everything went into the build, really went into the build. Anyways, that's all just about Conflux's priorities and what, what we're trying to be. Um, we have an instance that we run for uh, uh, for Red Hat teams, and it's uh, it's an opportunity if you guys wanted to onboard or experiment with onboarding to, to try and do some of your builds there. Um, I don't know anything about the, the, the builds currently in uh, Container Tools group. So, you know, uh, you have to educate me about what, what, what the problems even are. Um, so I guess that's that. Does that help? Cool. I guess I kind of know this answer, but uh, just uh, for everyone's sake, can you explain um, the where it's going to be available in the build system? And I know it's not available now, but when? The Conflux system in Fedora. Ah, in Fedora. Good. OK, so we, we are in the process now 
of standing up an instance that's dedicated to the Fedora community. Uh, I, I omitted mentioning that before, that, that, that helps. It'll be integrated with FAS off so that you have to have a FAS account in order to access it. The timeline right now is to try and have it ready before Flock in August. The idea being that we would like to, to show it to Fedora community contributors so they can play with it and figure out what they like about it, don't like about it, um, and you know, take conversations forward from there. So your question was, when will it be available? And the answer was by Flock, which is, I think, August 9th, early August. Uh, Ralph, I had a question. So. Uh... From what I understand, usually we uh, gate on the access of such systems using a FAS group. So when you say authenticated by FAS, do you mean there is a there is going to be a FAS group and you got to be a part of that FAS group to have access, or is it going to be direct authentication with OIDC from direct authentication? Direct authentication with OIDC. Ah, that makes sense. Thanks a lot. Yeah, although I've heard that the spam bots in FAS are maybe more, excuse me, a problem again than they were in the past, so we might need to gate based on a group, uh, but current plans are just OIDC off. All right, and this would be uh, this would be showcased in Flock, uh, which means uh, people should be able to request something post-Flock, I suppose. Yeah, that's the whole idea, is just a, a, a place to experiment with it and see if and how it meets meets needs and then we're I mean we're a living growing project so there's lots to change yeah that, that was Excellent. your question right it's not like a fixed thing it's this way you yep. have to use it. so uh, this makes sense that. makes sense yeah. and is there any sort of a staging environment that is available right now for us to experiment start experimenting with with a red hat ID yes okay yeah, we have an upstream installer. If you really want to get your hands dirty, you could install your own instance, but you'll need a, a Kubernetes cluster for that. Yeah. Uh, so by the way, uh, any idea how this would affect the whole RPM build process, including maybe OG, Bodhi, and all those things? Yeah. In, in a, we, we, we don't have anything in place in our main branches right now that build and manage RPMs, but we it's part of our vision, our, our mission to build RPMs and manage their distribution and shipping. So for me to try and say how it will work, like with Bodhi would be to go too far. I can like pitch how I think it, it might work, but it's, you know, there's lots of, lots of details to figure out. Uh, it's still there. So I guess that's to say, if you were thinking in 2024, the answer would be there's no impact on RPMs. Your container builds, if they include RPMs in them and need to, then you would need to reference Koji builds or copper builds to pull them in. Um, in 2025 and later, imagine you can do a chain build of RPMs and containers in Conflux and then manage a release of that to some destination. We don't know whether that looks like, like so, so some ideas, we don't know whether that looks like just replacing Bodhi entirely and using in Conflux, there's this whole subsection I didn't mention at all yet called the release service, complex release service. And its job is to provide um, Tecton pipelines that can distribute content to different managed destinations. We can imagine the tier zero mirror in Fedora being one such destination. And then we continue to use the mirror infrastructure after that. Um, and that does Bodhi's job, right? You queue up an update for updates testing and so on. The one thing it doesn't solve is the community user feedback on updates testing. We have to envision a way to do that. Do we, you know, carve out a piece of Bodhi and replace it with Conflux, but we still use that user interface? Do we invent a newer, smaller, simpler way to receive user feedback? You know, I, these are these are some ideas. I think it also affects the way that we kind of ship um, anything which is blockery. So essentially, something that is targeted as a freeze exceptions, you should be able to push them somewhere between the release during the exception time period. And that would require user feedback, definitely. So um, you know, getting that user feedback right would ideally be a, a vision somewhere in the 2025 timeline if we want to maintain RPMs uh, going forward with it. I think that's right. I think as a stepping stone on the way to that, however we lay that out one way or the other, is to use the Koji content generator interface. 
So there could be a point at which we begin building RPMs in Conflux and then incorporating them into container builds that way. But then we're still importing them back into Koji. And then from Bodhi's point of view, it doesn't know the difference. It doesn't know that this is a Conflux build RPM versus a Koji build RPM. But that's, that's just part of incrementally heading down the path. That sounds perfect. That sounds like a good idea. Uh, do you think it would be a, this this would ideally become an initiative for something like a Fedora Council going forward? Because I see this as a big change, and I see this as a system-wide change throughout. Uh, I mean, Mohan has more experience in um, you know, maintaining infrastructure for Fedora here. But I, I do, do you think this might benefit from a council initiative point of view? I think it definitely does. It would benefit from that. Um, speaking as an individual, I'm hesitant to to push or drive that. I, I, I'm leading the Conflux project, and I'd like to make available as many resources to the Fedora community as I can to make informed choices and even provide you know production support and instances for that. But in terms of the decision making in Fedora, I feel like mm -hmm. I, I want personally I want somebody who's already in and closer to the Fedora community to be driving that decision. I'm happy to to join on that path, but I don't want to be the one who's who's pushing it. It feels like an outsider, right? Pushing to try and make something happen. And I, I don't like the dynamics of that. I can actually, uh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to ask, um, one, one of the features that I really liked about Conflux was all of the kind of canned bundles that were provided. Um, though I, I didn't find, I wasn't able to find any documentation on them. Um, individually, which is a bit frustrating, but do you see do you see that being used on the Fedora side? And and if so, like, is what is the relationship between the two? Are they going to support each other in some way? Or are they just going to be duplicates of each other? Mm -hmm. What what was your thinking there? Can I can I clarify to make sure I know what you're talking about? It's the tech, the the bundles, the Tecton bundles that flow yeah. into the tasks in the pipeline. Yeah. Yeah. I can link you the document that each of those has some very, very terse documentation. It's a readme for each one in the repo where we maintain them. Let me, oh, okay. Let me so, link that quick. Uh, and then go ahead. I was looking in the um I was looking in the Quay description field. <laughs> yeah. That's 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 great feedback. We have all this data. When we build them, we should attach that data. There's a if you didn't know, there is a there is a Quay API for updating the description field. So you can put that in your you know, GitHub Actions or whatever. To be honest, I don't even know if we're putting labels on these images, you know, or OCI annotations. All of that could be useful for if you're looking at a bundle to understand. What yeah, I was honestly, I was just looking to see like what the parameters were and what the and what the results were for each one. Because what I ended up having to do was go and take apart the image and look at like the the code that was in. Right. it. Was a major pain. Right. Right. Yeah, look in. I posted in sidebar. This is the Git repository where we maintain right. all of them and organized under this directory. For each of them, there's a README file that should describe something about it, okay. the list of parameters, the results it exposes, and so on. That's helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, you asked a question about do we imagine for Fedora and Conflux and for maybe for Red Hat's instance, those being the same bundles? And I think the answer is yes. Is, is yes. We should we for Red Hat? We're trying to use as much as we can of the upstream set of bundles uh, all in our instance, and it would be advantageous to Fedora and for container tools if you're doing it independently to do the same. I think you should be allowed, and there's nothing about the system that would prevent you from introducing your own bundles and allowing those in your own release policy. That like you don't have to go to committee to make that happen. It's just part of the part of the design. But like we'll be better off if we're using the same bundles. I think um, for as much as we can. Uh, going back to uh, RPM maintenance, um, I can tell you how we're doing it currently in our projects. Uh, we maintain the spec file upstream, uh, and we use packet to run copper bills on all our PRs uh, before merge. And also after merge, it goes to another copper, uh, the, the latest upstream main branch. And also downstream releases for Fedora and CentOS stream are triggered by packet itself. Um, so what I was curious about was, uh, let's say long term the the Bodhi and Koji goes away. Uh, so first question is, are you aware of packet? And the, the follow up would be, 
would there be opportunities for packet and conflux to work together? Yeah, it's a great question, and it's maybe the hardest question. That I don't know. I don't know what our path is going to be with packet. In in on one level. You could imagine that packet would exist as it does, and it's just replacing its back end of copper and Koji with Conflux. Because Conflux could provide a French tech. We were just talking a couple weeks ago. That's, that's one uh, I don't know, vision for the way it could work. On the other hand, Conflux also wants to be integrated with your GitHub experience and providing feedback on your PRs, just like packet does. So we could imagine maybe a different, different experience with the way that works. And to be honest, we just don't know yet. Francis and I were just talking, we felt it was premature to make decisions about it when Conflux can't even build RPMs yet. But we'll be I don't know, sharing ideas and brainstorming around how we make those two um, fit together down the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just to add what Ralph mentioned that, yeah, Packet can play various roles here. And uh, since, since Ralph mentioned that, that the Conflux currently can't manage the RPMs, but can take it from somewhere else. So I can imagine that we can currently support a way that we'll build the RPM in Koji or Cooper and then trigger a Conflux pipeline and finish the uh, the image build there maybe. So I think that's, that's quite quietly possible to like combine the, the benefits of both. So, yeah. Uh, that I'll, sounds great. I'll because I'm looking at it from the from the end user's point of view, and I've gotten pretty used to the packet uh, workflow. So yeah, if, if Conflux could be triggered to packet, that would be even better, uh, personally for me. Yeah, yeah this is probably that then then task for me to to check the API and probably think with Ralph to see how how we can communicate and authenticate maybe since we are we will then be do the things behalf on the users so we need to figure out that like what are the ways to to play with that but yeah yeah and i think i think it makes sense to explore that too um and it makes sense for you Lukash, especially less things changing using the the user experience you're used to is is, is straightforward right I, i'd say as a as a caution on the on the other end of the the balance that we should we should think about trying to reduce the total number of systems that we have involved in our end-to-end -end processes. Yeah. It's like so confusing <laughs> to try and chase through everything all the way to the end. And even the systems that don't have names, right? Like cron jobs that run on some specific VM and Fedora infrastructure or internally Red Hat. So I'd, I'd love if we can in, on, on a multi-year path, right? Reduce and decommission as many of those as, as possible, which is not to say that packet has to be one of those where we, we can figure out what to do, but just I keep that in mind as we go. Some things may need to change in order to, to really simplify things. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Uh, and we, we can also like switch the backends if needed. And with that, maybe we can sub support the same workflow for other projects without knowing that they use Conflict internally. But so, yeah. Cool. Sounds good. Uh, one other question I had was um, recently we've been looking at building bootable machine images from, uh, from PodMac. Uh, and right now we, have those running, I think, as fun jobs on the Fedora CoreOS infrastructure. So would it be possible to trigger CoreOS pipelines from GitHub PRs using Conflux? Can I try and say it back using not quite the same words and see if it's the same? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. From a GitHub PR, could you trigger a Conflux pipeline that builds a Bootsy bootable container? Uh, rather, uh, uh, what do you call us? Oh, rather than a bootsy images. image, rather than a bootsy image, uh, more of a chorus image. I guess I don't know. Rough, uh, it's right. like it, it has to generate um, disk images like QCOWs, raw, and uh, VHDs. <clears throat> And it also needs to to be able to create also a standard OCI image, which that should be a no-brainer. It's the latter, I think, Lokesh is asking about. Yeah. The, the, the short answer is, well, I guess in theory, yes. In practice, right now, we've got work ongoing to produce those disk image artifacts from 
a bootable container input using we have that part nailed down yeah so we we have a that's what Lokesh was describing as a <clears throat> cron job we've worked with the chorus team we've got a script that runs basically it's the same script they use to build their images we run it it pours this stuff out at the end of it so we've got the ability to do it i think Lokesh is asking us if do you see any issues with us doing that there in confluence and then um, we will likely switch to the official manner in which it's done once that your process is hammered out i don't see an issue with that that's supported use case or to be supported use case look is that what you're getting at uh yes uh, either directly in conflicts or maybe use conflux to trigger the the coros pipeline uh, either way of those two options i think the first should be our target with in the spirit of trying to reduce the total number of things mm -hmm. yep if for some reason it's not possible then yes calling out to an external pipeline is perfectly reasonable cool sounds good yeah thank you and um <clears throat> the is Two-part question. So is uh, the conflux going to build the base images, Fedora base images as well, or is it going to be done by... <laughs> this is coming from my previous experience, so I, as, you, as you can understand. And, and, and go back to the beginning, right? I don't want to make decisions for Fedora about what Fedora does, but conflux should be able to build, can build base images. Okay. And and so there's, I don't see a reason why you wouldn't want conflux to do that yeah. if you were in and conflux and building um, other artifacts. And uh, the second question is, uh, as a user, can I request it to build uh, container images or or a, it's a regular Fedora as well, or do you have to be a particular group membership or something to make these builds happen? For the Flock demo, it'll just be you have a FAST account, and that's all you need. OK. Which might be problematic, like we were talking about earlier. So yeah. maybe a FAST group will be in order eventually. OK. One thing I ran into, on, I opened it, I ended up opening a, an issue on it. Apparently, it was already an existing request just for um, being able to trigger jobs on a cron schedule. I know, like, maybe there's a solution for that internally. Is Do you see something that, like that also happening on the Fedora side of things? Because anticipating that's going to be a need as opposed to just triggering based on, you know, an API or um, mm -hmm. you know, PR push or whatever. We do not have support for that. That's I'm curious. What do you want to do on a cron basis? Um, so specifically, the the Podman Builda and Scopio images that we build, they don't actually compile anything. They're just building based on um, whatever's in a, whatever's available in Fedora. They're pulling in the Podman package or the Builda package, and so there's not there's no reason to. I mean. You really don't want to trigger it that way, right? Yeah. On, a, on a push or whatever. So we just run them every day and have it pick up whatever the latest version is and use that. So my my recommended flow with Conflux would be to, for the, in the container image that is, the, in the container file that is has the DNS instruction to install that particular package, but add a, an RPM lock file that says we want to pull in this particular package and resolve it to the particular NVR that you find in Koji at that time and commit that to Git. So that when you do the build, you get exactly that NVR and no other NVR. Yeah, and then I'm you getting... get scheduled process real quick by using Renovate or Dependabot. So that yeah. on a nightly schedule, you can get it to post, you know, scoop up what are the latest builds and all the relevant tags in Koji and then propose a, a PR that will trigger a build that pulls yeah. in a particular NVR. Yeah, no, that's, that's ex I actually tried exactly that thing. <laughs> yeah. uh, it was just way too complicated. Oh, based on, okay. Yeah, based on what we have, right? So right now, like I said, it's a it's a it's a cron schedule that just runs daily, and a DNF install. It, like it's so simple, as opposed to um, the, the, you know having the renovate config and the log file and you know all of that extra stuff. It was just going to be too much to maintain. And then somebody actually had, would have to go in and you know like uh, merge those PRs as well. So it was entirely you know had a there was a human in the loop, right? Whereas a cron job would just you know, you could kind of set it and forget it. 
I think you can get to a point where you grant renovate the rights to merge its own PRs if CI passes. So you can merge, yeah. It can propose the update. And if sure. the build succeeds, then it would merge to main or whatever the branches that you care about. But yeah, it's the true. problem with complexity in the number of files, that's it's yeah, it, it just it just kind of ballooned on me. But I was doing exactly what you said, have it, you know, I had a locked file with the versions in it. Um, and it wasn't just Podman, right? It was Podman and all of its dependencies. Yeah. Um, so we would track all of those uh, and then renovate would would update it. The thing that I the other thing that I ran into as well was there was no at least at the time there was no way to track the um, there was no renovate manager to track the, the lock file. I understand that's been fixed, but that's right. Recently. Cool. I'd love to see the files later if you could share them either after the call or during the sure. Thank you. But in any case, your question about a cron-based job has been requested by others for tests, actually, primarily. This is the first time I've heard about it for uh, yeah. Um So we can we can consider it. It's a thing to, I mean, at the end of the day, it's just a cron job, Kubernetes cron job. I mean, the resource is there. It's about, do you have the rights to create it in your namespace, and why not? All right, I'm hearing a lot of silence here. Are we winding down? Because we do have another topic and it's about halfway through. Uh, I, I wanted to check with Munster about the container state, but uh, he dropped from the call. Uh, so maybe we can take this to the chat uh, for their stuff. So, okay. Sounds good. Cool, thank you, Ralph. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you, Stick as well. All right. Uh, so thank you for that, both everyone. And we're on to our second and final topic, which is community interaction, uh, bridging between our different channels and potentially choosing an official chat platform. Uh, Brent, I believe you're the one who started this. You, Brent is not here anymore. Uh, Okay, I will do my best to summarize, and then I believe Paul had some points he wanted to make. But uh, basic summary here is we have a lot of different official chat channels at this point. We have an IRC, we have a Discord, we have a Matrix. All three of them are presently bridged with uh, varying degrees of effectiveness. Basically, you can chat in any one of them and your message will make it to all of them, although channels being channels, uh, it's not perfect. And also the bridges occasionally do break down and we don't have an easy way of telling when they've done that. Uh, anyways, the idea here is, do we want to keep bridging? Because this does generate a lot of traffic from everything that everyone says in IRC being put in two other places, et cetera, et cetera. And on top of that, if we're going to stop bridging, should we choose one of the different uh, communications channels we have, the Discord, the Matrix, maybe the IRC, as an official chat platform and say that the developers will be on there and we'll have an official development channel, but we'll also have official channels for answering the community as well. Uh, and Paul, I believe you had some strong opinions about this. Can't hear you, Paul, if you're talking. Okay. Uh, I'm also going to poke Brent because he's the one who had the idea here. But while I do that, anyone have any other thoughts on this? Yes. Uh, so the the bridge between uh, IRC and Matrix, uh, I think, is permanently broken at this point. And I think Matrix was blaming it on IRC. Uh, what we have right now, I think, is a one-way relay, which uh, relays messages from the IRC, from IRC to matrix 
but I don't think it does it the other way around. Um, and I don't know how much the, the Discord bridge is functioning with Matrix currently. Can you hear me now? Yes. OK. Uh, first off, to your question, the relay works in both directions. That's really just a dump. It's a user that sits in both channels and then copies the message and sends it into the other. So it's, it's not some highly integrated bridge that that we had before because Libra and, and the matrix, uh, ESM or, or how they call it, the team that, that hosts the matrix org, they had some differences about the privacy and other policies. That's why it was shut down and it doesn't, it will not come back uh, at this point. So the, the relay bot, it's doing its job, I think, but yeah, the, the Discord to Matrix Bridge as well, it's hosted some free platform. It, like there, there are no monitoring tools for the bridges, which means you don't know that it stopped working. And I think that's the issue. Uh, unless you are sitting like in every channel, yeah, like you, you won't notice. And for me, I find the idea to migrate to like any, to a single thing is like a downgrade for users because we have a large base in, in each channel. It's not that we are concentrated in, in one particular. Uh, it will result in unhappy users, uh, regardless of what you choose. So I think it's more sensible to look into like better, like bridges uh, or like monitoring tool, whatnot, and not think about having a single source of truth because that's everybody likes something different. Uh, we can force our team, I guess, but you cannot force a user. And currently there's a good amount of activity I don't want to lose. So I think the big part of the concern here was that basically there's so much going on in the primary channel, the channel that gets bridged everywhere, that it's very hard for people to keep track and actually participate in the conversation, which I don't know if that's necessarily 100% true, but it can certainly be overwhelming at times. Uh, and I don't know if there's anything we can really do about this, although maybe we could have separate channels for development specific chat and things like that, because part of the value we'd like to get out of this is the Podman dev team would like to have an easier way of contacting people who are opening PRs against us, things of that nature, basically a way of interacting with folks who are directly contributing, not just answering questions about Podman. I think it makes sense to keep the bridge, but to recommend one platform over the other, kind of like we strongly recommend joining on this, but um, but you're able to join from these other things. So kind of a recommended option. And then a if you insist on continuing to use IRC, uh, you may do so. Um, I personally, I have a strong preference be uh, on Discord because it's kind of made to build community. Um, there's a lot more features that you can use um, and a lot more channels that you can use to like, uh, I don't know, uh, make it more uh, welcoming to, to new users. Um, and then uh, I think people who like IRC or like Matrix have used Matrix or IRC in the past um, and in like their setup. So um, I think that's kind of like where I stand with it. Um, but I, I've looked at the the Discord um, and it looks like, so the Discord is bridged, uh, there's a Podman channel bridged to our Podman Matrix and IRC. And then there's other, uh, there's another Podman desktop channel um, that's bridged to their Matrix. Uh, 
I think. Um, and so uh, it seems that in our channel, um, the the interaction between everybody is uh, pretty split between Matrix IRC and Discord. Um, and then the desktop channel is mostly Discord users, uh, which kind of makes sense since Discord is a, a GUI. Um, so, uh, but uh, like recommending Discord is kind of what, um, I would prefer uh, just because you also have the interaction of being like, oh yeah, uh, if somebody asks a desktop question in the Podman channel, you could just say, oh, ask it in the desktop channel, which is just one click away instead of having to find um, another room or something else. Uh, but that's, yeah. So what I'm hearing here is that we like the bridging. It seems to bring real value, especially because we have a very split community in terms of platform but maybe we should be thinking about having a place where all the developers congregate in a more, I don't know, a quieter channel on one specific chat platform. Uh, Brent. Well, actually, Lakesh raised his hand, so. Uh, yeah, I didn't really want to start another Discord versus Matrix uh, argument, but uh, from my, from my personal point of view. Um, the A lot of the, the rooms I hang out in are hosted on Matrix, like uh, Fedora, Packet, um, and a bunch of other Fedora rooms. And as far as the Discord-like experience goes, I think we can create a similar experience on Matrix, mainly have a, a space with multiple rooms. Um, yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. Okay. Um, what I was going to add was when we talked about this prior to my PTO and some of this was my responsibility to walk away with and I haven't gotten to it, was that we were going to, we agreed we would make a, a whatever it is, podman-dev on Discord and the team would hang there to get off channel at least from the main channel. And then we were going to send a notice that 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 was what was going on in the Podman channel is more about how to use and questions around it. Um, and that we would sort of back out of Slack for non-confidential and non-private um, team conversations and those would go on in Discord. So that's what we had kind of talked about. I believe the room channel for Discord had been created the dash dev one. So it sounds like we've maybe departed from the initial one and we'd rather have that in Matrix. I'll, I'll let you guys, I don't really care. They both suck. The, as Ed pointed out, if you're in Pound Podman on Discord, it's just a spam fest from IRC the way it comes across. Paul, hand up. Yeah, just like, I mean, you kind of mentioned you don't really care, but I think for me, Discord is not uh, free and open source software, and that to me disqualifies it as a main chat platform. It's against their terms of service to use your own client and their API, which means like you cannot use the client you want, technically. It's like, that, that to me is just, hostile behavior that shouldn't be encouraged. So that's just my personal opinion. That's, I think that's good and fair input. Um, I think most people on the team prefer to do the right thing in quotes. Um, and if we would prefer matrix, uh, I would be happy if we would make a development channel in there um, and clarify. I do think I do think we're gonna have to kind of say this is where we hang out and look for stuff and if that's you know really matrix then that's cool by me. I think making a matrix channel for this is fine. Uh, as long as we're clear that this is specifically for development related conversations, as in this is this is not where you ask questions about how do I get my container working. This is we're trying to push a pull request forward uh, 
basically synchronous communication with the Podman team on how do we make that happen, things like that. Uh, we might also be able to restrict room visibility. It would be, I would be fine with having everyone able to view, but it would be nice if we could limit participation. Uh, I'm an IRC guy, so the terminology I would use is we'd have a room where everyone could join, but only voiced people could uh, speak in. I mean, that that's something you can set up like on any of the platforms, but yeah, if, if, if we then try to bridge something like that, that would make it a mess, of course, like the permissions on all the sites. But I, I still don't, so, so what's the point of, of having a dev channel that we, we take like our communication there that is currently like, part, like mostly in, in our like internal Slack from Red Hat? Yeah, that was that was really what started this conversation, at least in my memory, was <clears throat> um, teams, uh, sister teams, if you will, wanted to be wanted to see our communication be more transparent and not on an internal only channel. And um, there are several of us that on the main channel of Podman with the bridges, it's just like a streaming, it's like a streaming service of questions and answers and not relevant stuff to, to doing development work. So what we, we were talking about, Hey, let's carve out a channel dash dev, um, that that was common IRC behavior. Uh, I think I presented the example of Python where, there's Python on how you use it to program and questions around programming with Python. And then there's a Python dev for actually, um, for actually developing the Python stuff, the package, the libraries, the, the language. Uh, so, uh... One thing I wanted to check on was, um, do we also need to check with the Podman desktop team because they have a strong preference for this part? I feel That's no. why we chose Discord, if I remember right. Matt, is that your memory? I don't recall that being the reason, but I also, I don't think it's unreasonable to ask them to keep a matrix client open to look at our chat. And if they are very insistent, we can honestly, maybe, is it possible to do a one-way relay Discord to Matrix? Because I would be fine with mirroring the results of the chat into a separate Discord channel. I would just want people to actually have to join the Matrix to participate. I think we can bridge individual channels, uh, but I don't know about one-way bridging them. Personally, I would think if we make a dev channel, Matt, we should, that's it. That's where it is. I saw Chris shake his head, so I'm assuming he's voting for that. Also, Paul's okay. got his hand up. Yeah, Paul. Yeah, that, that that was my question. Would there be any downside to bridging the dev channel again to every platform? Where <laughs> every dev can have the thing where they want to be. I think we can put that in the header of the other channels saying if you're looking for Podman developers, you know, this is where we hang out. We put that on our Podman IO and everywhere else that we talk about how to find us. <clears throat> That's really the, the work here is to update that how to find us. And, but we have to decide where, where we're going to be. Do all the matrix clients use the heaviest possible framework I've ever seen in my life? As opposed no. to the 32K IRC client I'm used to running. I, I don't know about the size of every client, but uh, if you <laughs> there are not web-based clients, electron-based clients. I, 
I guess that's your question. Yeah, I mean, are we all going to need memory upgrades for this, or? That was a uh, joke. I'm happy to. I'm happy to do this. Um, and and again, I took the to do to sort of try to summarize and put it all together. So we just need a decision, and then we can slowly do that. If Matt, you feel we're at a point where we're sort of leaning towards matrix, but we should just vote it out. Yeah, I think it would be valuable to put out an email on the list just to tell people we're planning on doing this. I don't even know if I'd necessarily want to vote it. Just see if anyone has a really strong objection. My inclination would be to do it. This is what we're doing. And as long as a team, because it's supposed to be a team, it's a developer channel, so we get to decide this. Right now, it's we're spread across three, and some people are participating in one or the other. But it's all basically in Slack right now when it comes to development. So what I'm, I guess what I'm saying is, if we're going to send a note, the note can say, hey, this is the way we're going to change. This is what it's going to be in the future because right now you have nothing. We hide everything from you in Slack. I wouldn't actually say that, but that, that's the intent. Yeah, I think that's a fine uh, okay. way to go, go on about it. Like, I don't, basically my position is unless we have a serious problem with this plan, we should just go ahead with Matrix. Yeah, that's what I want to hear. Does anyone have a problem? Other than Brent. Okay. So um, the takeaway is, I, uh, just to repeat, so we're all on the same page. The takeaway is I will open a Matrix dev channel. And I will send out an email sort of saying, hey, this is what we're doing. We're not, we're going to leave all the bridges in place for the common channels. Podman development conversations will go on in the, uh, in this matrix channel um, the, and sort of explain why we broke it off because it's development only and then go through to podman io and our github repository i think we also mentioned where we hide out and put in there where we are updated as opposed to free node that seem about right did i get them all Sounds yeah. like me. Okay. Keep in mind there is like matrix is decentralized, so you would need to have a decision where the channel would be created, like the original channel. Tell me more. Well, I, I guess it's sort of, I guess the best way would be the, the Fedora project where, where it's now the Portman channel. So I, I mean, that would make sense. And then but basically every other server that joins or like a user from another server would basically mirror that like that's the like decentralized thing. So if but. so we would be creating our channel under the Fedora project. Is that what you're kind of saying? Yeah, I, I guess from the services it could be like matrix.org and fedora project.org or only one of them. Like it's it doesn't matter really, I guess, but like it's <laughs> that's so, the thing with uh, decentralized service. So for the Podman Matrix channel, I think the actual address is on matrix.org, but it also has, uh, I guess you could call it aliases. It has a federalproject.org alias, so people can uh, reach it through the federal project link, okay. as well as the matrix link if they want to. It's not. Um, would it be Lokesh? Would it? You seem to be well informed here. Would it be best for you to make that channel and issue invites? Um, sure, uh, Paul. You were saying something. Yeah, I mean it's like it's decentralized. It's not like there's a main place. Once you create the channel there and then there and then like if they are part, it's like one thing. So it's right. Uh, and I think the only thing is if you want to create the actual room on the Fedora project uh, server itself. We might need to ping the federal project people, but I, on Matrix, all right, I think we can do it ourselves. 
So Brent, uh, I can go ahead with that. Sounds good. I think, um, and then we agreed invisibility will stay visible until that's yep. not tolerable. Or if it ever becomes intolerable or intolerable, we can change our minds. Yep. I like that. So uh, the permissions on the channel, uh, is it only our, like, we can talk on it or um, can other people talk on it? I mean, I think if a contributor wants to contribute and they know to go to this channel, we want them to be able to talk. That That's okay. my initial thinking. And again, if it becomes intolerable, we can, we, we'll have to talk about it at that point. Or we'll have to just be real disciplined about people asking container questions, telling them to go over to, you know, Podman channel and do that. Okay. Yeah. I think that's uh, optimal. And anyone not think we should do that? Because no, that, that makes logical to me. That makes the most sense. Oh, we can set up roles and manage permissions uh, who can read, who can write. Uh, I can see those things in the matrix settings. Yeah, but I think what we're saying is let's have it open. Sure. And yep. if it becomes a problem, then we, we have the controls we can put stuff on. Yeah, right. and maybe can you op a bunch of us so we if we have a bad actor, we can close yes. them out? Yes, that's possible, yeah. Cool. I also wouldn't be opposed to doing something like, a, uh, I think somebody said like a one-way bridge to Discord and saying, if you want to participate and chat with the maintainers, please go to Matrix to actually like talk to us, but then they could see what we're doing on the channel. But um, if that's too much, then it's fine too. I think the, that would be, like you could use the normal bridge and then you could on Discord, you could, like set the room permissions to like not be in a yeah something like that right. yeah Except, uh, does that in if we if we do something like that does it encourage that crosstalk stuff coming into our channel that we don't really want no they won't they won't be able to talk from discord to matrix only people in matrix can like talk in the matrix room uh I got that part. Okay. Uh, I guess what I'm saying is if from the Discord perspective, it looks like it's blended and they go into Podman Dev and start asking those questions, you know, they're going to no, be... No, we can uh, restrict it. We can restrict the Podman Dev uh, channel to literally only the bridge can talk in there. So nobody else can even send a message um, and saying, if you want to participate, go to Matrix. Okay. However you guys like. What client should I select first? Well, if you are such a nerd, why don't you use curl against the API, REST API? Okay. I guess I deserve that. I'll ask I it again. WeChat, WeChat does have a matrix plugin, though I haven't used it in a long time. I only use the web view. You use the web UI? Yep. Okay, what does everyone else use? WeChat. Okay, Ashley? I use the web UI, um, but I had an issue a couple of years ago where uh, for some reason, all the bridges ignored my account only, and only my account. Um, and so maybe that's why I have a slight grudge against Matrix, but... Uh, I can come back into it and see, yeah, just the the web UI is, works fine for me usually. Okay, cool. Okay, I think we're starting to wrap up discussion. Do you have any more on this? It sounds like we have a good path forward. All right. That is basically it on our agenda. Uh, turn it over to open discussion. Anyone have anything else they would like to talk about or discuss? 
Do we? I, one thing I was thinking about during Bug Week, Matt, was did we ever kick around the idea of releasing a point release and backporting any bugs, whether we found relevant ones or not? I don't think we did. Uh, we're due to st to cut our first RC for five two okay. a week from Monday, so the fifteenth, and then final would be week of the 29th probably like the 31st ish okay. so that's in my perspective that's close enough that i'm not urgently thinking about another point release but if people want to do one i have no objection i mean it was four weeks that would be so we wouldn't have cut a release for what almost seven weeks like even bug fixes yeah about right i see what you're saying i have if we want to do one next week, that would probably be perfectly fine. Uh, Wednesday-ish, say. Did anyone merge some bugs that they'd like to see, you know, get that they think would be easily cherry-picked and worth releasing? Mine was, oh, yeah, a couple I did were lightweight. Yeah, I had a bunch of fixes that are probably cherry-picking fine, right? So maybe one thing we can do, Matt, is walk your walk our bug spreadsheet and just see how many of those could go back nice and easy. Yeah, I'm fine with this plan. Uh, I'll pencil in a release for July 10th, and I'll poke the desktop team and let them know. Okay. All right. Anything else? Otherwise, I will go ahead and stop the recording. All right, hearing nothing.